I heard there were a lot of injuries across pro wrestling. I think we should talk about those a little bit before we get into anything else. You know what I mean? We talked about all of them yesterday. No, we didn't. Well, go for it then. There were a lot of injuries, and I don't want to talk about the Raw report. Get out of here, you idiot. It opened up with Big E coming out. And, uh, uh, dude, I, it takes two minutes for me to review this show, Mike, because nothing happened. Big E came out, and then, actually, here, there's something to talk about. The story of this show is, we did a whole go-home show setting up matches for after Survivor Series. That's what this whole show was about. Big E and Kevin Owens are feuding, but they're not wrestling at Survivor Series. They're going to wrestle down the road. Big E and Seth Rollins are feuding, but they're not wrestling at Survivor Series. They're wrestling down the road. Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan are feuding... But they're not wrestling in Survivor Series. They're going to wrestle down the road. So it's this a whole bunch, thing is about. It's a They've bunch of up. matches with yes. like there's no consequences to any of these matches. It's like it's what difference does it make if Roman Reigns or Biggie wins to a pay per view, one of their biggest of all time that they have not been building to. That's what the whole build to the Survivor Series is. The lack of build. That's what it's all about. Hey, here's some matches. You know where these aren't going to be the matches. We know these aren't going to be matches. We're going to shuffle these up later on. I, and then the go home for the show, uh, yeah, we're going to have a show. And there's going to be, you know, by the way, folks, this is the only time that Raw versus SmackDown competitors go after Actually, each other. it's funny you mentioned that, Mike. It's funny you mentioned that because I was listening on SmackDown. <laughs> and they don't say that Survivor Series, this is what they don't say. They don't say Survivor Series is the one time every year that Raw and SmackDown face off against each other. They don't say that. They say uh, it's the one time per year that Raw and SmackDown face off against each other at Survivor Series. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Go back and listen to it. Oh, my God. So they're God. actually not lying. That's true. It is the one time per year that Raw and SmackDown face off against each other at Survivor Series. Oh so my they've God. got their tagline. It's, it's, it's exactly like what I was talking about with Roman Reigns bending the knee. Do you remember when Cody was challenging and he said, if I don't win, I will never challenge for the world title again. It's been years and people are trying to figure out, well, how are they going to get around it? What are they going to do to like get around it? Blah, 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 blah. That's all WWE does is find ways to get around lying to you. On SmackDown, they said, this is classic. It was it was, it was Xavier Woods against Jay Uso last week. And the storyline was if if Xavier Woods won, Jay Uso would have to bend the knee. So he wins. But before Jey Uso bends the knee, the heels just all attack Xavier and he never bends the knee. They just totally didn't do what they promised, okay? Then they come back a week later and they say, on this show, it is going to be Xavier Woods versus Roman Reigns. And it's the same stip. Like, they literally reneged on the stipulation and then a week later had the balls to say, we're going to do it again, okay? So Roman Reigns says, if I can't make... Xavier Woods, bend the knee. I will bend the knee. And if I don't, I will never appear on SmackDown again. I think he said you could strip me the title or some crazy thing like that. So they tried to convince you that even though we reneged last week, well, this week we're really going to do it. So they do the match, and uh, Xavier wins via disqualification. When the Usos just beat him up. And they beat him up and they kill him. And then Roman Reigns goes... And he gets on one knee so they can put the crown on his head. So, in fact, based on what they told you, based on what they sold to you, he did not bend the knee to Xavier Woods. But he did put his knee on the mat so they could put the crown on his head. This is the kind of stuff that they do, okay? So, yes, it, it is the one time per year that Raw and SmackDown faces off against each other at Survivor Series. So even though they face off against each other a hundred times during the year, they're actually not lying about the stip. Oh, my God. It's like, like having lawyers and a crisis management PR team write up your storylines. You know, that's what that is. Okay, so they had Biggie and Owens feuding with each other, and then the Usos ran down, and then Riddle ran down. There was a big brawl. Sonya Deville says, I'm going to do something unorthodox. I'm going to make this a tag match. 
Well, that's never been done. Who wrote that line? Someone new? It's a tag match player. So we have Big E and Riddle versus the Usos. It goes three minutes to a DQ. And then, of course, you know, uh, whoever runs in. Rollins runs in, and then Orton runs in. So then we get a six-man and we had Rollins, Usos versus Big E, Randy Orton, and Riddle. They went about 13 minutes. It was a perfectly serviceable professional wrestling match. And uh, then Seth Rollins just, um, he pinned Riddle clean in the middle of the ring. Didn't pull the tights, nothing. The heel just pinned the baby face. Not setting up for a title match or anything, just pinned him. <laughs> so that was that. And then uh, Big E beat up Jay and said to tell Roman I'm ready. That was the full build to champion versus champion at Survivor Series. Now we move on to, like, other feuds on Raw. We have an interview. It was a three-hour show. There was not much to add to this thing whatsoever. It was a long three-hour show. I don't understand why I have to be put in a position to hate Adam Pierce. I thought you had a heel dynamic. When Bro, you we're only his... one segment in. I, I'm just, I, that's what I'm saying. Why? That's my only takeaway from this show because it was a paint by numbers show. By the time you get done talking about it, my biggest takeaway why do I have to hate Adam Pierce? Why? That's it. Because other everything else they did as far as shuffling the Mysterios out and adding in Lashley last week and then Austin Theory this week, everything they did to kind of get to the end, I mean, it wasn't very good, but then they got there. But, like, that's the the big shining thing of the show is why are you putting him in a position to go back to the heel authority character other than that's all you know how to do, so you fall that's back on That's why the there is no other than. Well, that's and why we're dragging like, out this on, review. Well, when you were talking about Jonathan Gresham, let's say he wants to be signed by WWE. Let me tell you something. Of all the people out there, Jonathan Gresham not being signed by WWE. Just that's the way that one goes. All right. Sorry. So Bianca Belair is in the back. And in storyline, she's getting ready for a match that hasn't been announced yet. So she's standing there ready to go to the ring. And she just doesn't ever go, I want Dewdrop. Well, it turns out Dewdrop's not there. So in storyline, what are you going to go to the ring for? Luckily, Tamina walks up and says, I'll face you. And they immediately play Bianca's music. It's not even like this was a setup for down the road. Like in storyline, she's just waiting there to go through the curtain for a match that's not even signed or announced. When she got to the building, didn't she ask around like no. drop here yet? Nope. So Bianca faces Tamina. It was five minutes. It was not very good. And uh, Bianca won. Becky Lynch does a promo talking about how she used to be friends with Charlotte. But then, you know, Charlotte's selfish and a horrible person. And so she's going to beat... Uh, the P out of her at the pay-per-view. She gets interrupted by Liv Morgan, who she's not facing at the pay-per-view. They have a long promo segment about how when Becky left, she told Liv that when I return, you're going to be the champion. But then she returned and Liv wasn't the champion. And so she just gets buried by Becky. I'm sorry you underperformed. Crowd's dead for this segment. They don't care about this Liv Morgan character because why should they? I mean, she does underperform in storyline. And so Liv calls her a name, slaps her, and they're going to wrestle after Survivor Series. We had Orton yelling at Riddle for always getting involved in feuds that they're not a part of. This led to the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. They just put over Otis like a monster. He just mauls everybody, and then his team loses. They pin Gable. We had Rey Mysterio yelling at Adam Pierce about taking his son off the Survivor Series team, and so Pierce gets mad and signs him to a match with Bobby Lashley. And by the way, to cut to the chase, Rey loses, and so Adam Pierce removes him from the team, okay? Now, listen, whatever. But you could have at least built up the match by saying, Rey, you're going to face Lashley, and if you lose, you're also off the team. Maybe five people would go, oh, I got to watch the match now. That's a big story. They didn't even say that. They just said the main event is Ray and Lashley. No stips, no nothing. The third hour of Raw. 
going to die of death. 15 seconds right here, okay? Just to say that, I mean, if you wanted to actually have layers and make this a, a heel turn by Adam Pierce that worked, he would have actually booked Lashley and done something where Theory, they both got matches or they both were in there before the Mysterios were. But instead, you don't do that, and you're booking this on the fly, and it's just even more annoying. If this is the direction you want to go with Pierce, put some layers into it instead of just having him come out there, make stupid decisions to make up for the fact that apparently he made stupid decisions, and what does it matter anyway if these two are the GMs of both brands? Queen Zelina beat Nikki Ash in three minutes. The storyline is that Nikki Ash is one half of the women's tag team champions, but she's a failure and a loser and would be a detriment to the Survivor Series team. She ranks below Queen Zelina. Then we had Rhea Ripley defeating Carmella. So, you know, they traded wins because they're going to fight for the tag team titles. Not at Survivor Series, but down the road. Big E was threatened by Adam Pearce not to get involved in the Kevin Owens match. So he was a, a nice trooper, nice soldier. He did not get involved because the heel GM told him not to. Kevin Owens beat Finn Balor, best thing on the show by a country mile. Uh, Kevin Owens won with the stunner clean in 12 minutes. If you got to watch one thing on the show, this is the only thing to watch. We had AJ and Omos doing bad comedy. This led to AJ and Omos versus Rude and Ziggler. Rude and Ziggler were in title contention like a couple weeks ago. Here they got uh, squashed 2 on one by Omos. And then AJ tagged in and hit the forearm and won. Three minutes. And then as noted, the last half hour of the show, Ray entrance, commercial, Survivor Series preview, recap of Lashley and Dominic, Bobby Lashley entrance, NXT commercial, Raw Talk plug, main event starts, commercial break, and we come back for like eight minutes of the match. Not even making this up. And uh, Bobby Lashley beat the heck out of him forever. Rey Mysterio screwed up his own 619. Uh, Bobby Lashley beat him with the yes lock. Adam Pierce came out and took Rey out of the match because he said, it's very important that Raw has a strong team. This is what the GM of Raw and SmackDown said. He's not the GM of Raw. He's the GM of both brands. And so to make the team strong in storyline, he removes Rey Mysterio and he puts in Austin Theory. Okay? Dumb. So in storyline, it is a downward move. In reality, in terms of making an actual good match for the wrestling fans, it's a downward move. Everything about this was designed to make the show worse in storyline and real life. Survivor Series on Sunday, everybody. Get your peacock going now. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance. This doesn't seem, Max, smart enough to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.